Songs come in different forms. There is cumuliform and there is stratiform. The stratiform is about 100 meters high, but you can talk of the, the width and the length. But when it comes in cumuliform, uh, the biggest swarm I observed when I was in Isiolo was 2 kilometers wide, 14 kilometers long, and 1.5 kilometers high. This was estimated by the DLCO experts to be, around, to be in trillions. And this is not the biggest swarm ever. There are other bigger swarms that have been recorded in other parts of the world. Even the, the swarms that are coming in from the neighboring countries, there are also some other bigger swarms that have been observed after the one I observed in Isiolo. This uh, confusion of between the grasshoppers and uh, locusts, and many people tend to confuse any time they see the grasshoppers, particularly the green variegated grasshoppers, which also stay in bands, they confuse them for desert locusts. Now, when you look at the, the insects themselves, the locusts have only one face in their life, and that is their solitary. Though variegated grass, grasshoppers can also aggregate. But desert locusts have two faces. They can live solitary life and they can also aggregate depending on the situation. Now, in the recession area, the desert locusts live as solitary insects. As in, just like the grasshoppers you see when you are walking outside in the grassland area. But now, when the condition improves, these insects will multiply in numbers. And as the condition of that area deteriorates, these insects will try to move closer to where the areas are suitable for their survival. In the process, their densities will increase. When the densities reaches between 250 to 500, then they have to change their behavior. Because there will be serious competition for the food resource in that area. They'll eat and accumulate some toxins in their system that they will use later on when they swarm away to ward off the predators. As the density increases, during that time, their population increases exponentially because the females are closer to the males and the mating is random in that area. In that case, they will have to fly to other areas where there is a lot of vegetation and that's where the swarming begins. You realize that when they are living a solitary life, given that they have not accumulated toxins from these other plants, their colors are brown. That is the solitary desert locusts. But when now they swarm, the colors change because of the toxins they have accumulated. The, the transition between solitary, the, the color change between solitary and uh, the gregarious is what is referred to as polymorphism. This kind of allows them to survive in a unique environment where there are so many predators. A predator will eat one but will not eat the second one because of the toxin it has the, the insect gathered from the other plants. For human consumption, it is okay, it can be consumed, it will not be toxic. But the toxin it accumulates is for the other predatory organisms. But human's body system is able to overcome the toxin accumulated from the plant. But again, talking of consuming desert locust in the middle of this kind of uh, in outbreak is insulting locals in areas where the invasions have happened. Unfortunately, in our generation, nobody has seen swarms of desert locusts apart from the experience we have here. So many of us that are talking of consuming desert locusts have not actually known what they are talking about. We are talking of a serious problem that must be fought. There is no any other way we are ready to share this country with desert locusts. No way. So if at all we have to eat insects, desert locusts, let us establish insectaries where we are going to rear these insects and actually know what they are eating, but not these wild insects that are just coming in from the neighboring countries. The University of Eastern Africa, uh, what are you doing uh, at the University of Nairobi? laboratories or scientists at the Department of Technology so that you assist uh, the community in dealing with this kind of invasion in future. What are you currently doing as a university? Uh, well, in the University of Nairobi, particularly in my school in Chiromo, we have a colony of desert locusts, but we have not been doing much research on them in terms of management because 
it didn't occur to us that in our generation we are going to have this kind of innovation. Though, with other partners, we are doing some work to look at the aggregation behavior. Uh, at the moment, I'm doing some study with the Global Locust Initiative based in the US. I'm also working on aggregation behavior with some guys in Germany in Max Planck Institute. They are coming in next week and we'll go to the field to look at which factors actually are responsible for this aggregation behavior. If at all, we'll find a way of dispersing them at the new fall stage. And when we do that, these insects finally will leave as solitary insects. So we are in the early stages of trying to see how we can disperse them at the level stage. Some studies were done earlier by the ECP team that identified some hormones that can be used to disperse this insect, but this has not been commercialized. We'll try to see if our results agree with what was found by Professor Asan Ali when he was working at ECP, agree, then we can see how best this can be commercialized and it can be used in the recession areas to disperse these insects before they aggregate and swarm. To appeal to the partners to help us get rid of these insects first before we follow up on other studies that are necessary as far as uh, the future management is concerned. Uh, what we have today is massive, and if we are left alone as a country without support of the partners, we will not be able to contain it. Even though we are praying that when the season will change, some of the individuals that will remain here could shift, could be pushed by wind to the northern part, uh, to Ethiopia, to southern Sudan, and northern Uganda. But still, we have to suppress the new fall stages now. What, what? Public, yes, has all the right to ask questions about their safety. But the challenge we have here is, in our generation, we are getting desert locusts for the first time, and we must contain it. The experts on the ground are well informed that in case they use some insecticides that will have negative effect on human beings and the environment, then they also bear the consequences. The list of insecticides that are being used in the country has been provided by FAO. And uh, the DC, DCL, DLCO that is taking the lead in spraying have to confirm that the insecticides being used actually agree with the criteria provided by FAO. Yes, there are concerns, but I can assure members of the public that they are safe. The insecticides that are being used to contain these uh, desert locusts deteriorate from the environment within a limited time. So in terms of uh, spraying the areas, uh, the team that is concerned with the spraying try to avoid civilized areas where we have a lot of human settlement. They try to avoid the swarms that roost around the water bodies. This is to ensure that at the end of the day, there is minimum negative effect on the environment. So members of the public, take it from me, you are safe. Your health has been taken care of by the team that is doing the spraying. It's done any time the roosting swarm is seen. So you can't tell. If at all they spread maybe this area today, and uh, you know after, after milling around, around 9, 10, the swarm will take off. If another swarm comes to roost here, it will be spread the following day. The mission is to exterminate them if possible. Though it might not be possible to exterminate them, so they are trying to ensure that these insects are properly controlled. It, it is not easy to estimate how much so far has been spent because the initial request the ministry made to the treasury was around 230 million but this is just a drop in the ocean when you look at the negative effects this uh, insect is going to have on the livelihood of the, the affected communities the insecticides that will be used the team on the ground that is doing surveillance the aeroplanes that must be hired this estimate, uh, the, the, it is estimated that the whole thing by June will cost about 7 billion shillings. The multi-agency team recommended that they establish four command centers. One in Wajir, one in Mandera, one in Isiolo, and one in Kabarnet. Every command center will have two aeroplanes, sorry, four aeroplanes. Two for spraying and two for surveillance. In total, they need like 16 aeroplanes. All these must be taken care of in terms of fuel. 
in terms of uh, servicing. Yeah. Um, was never cleared. It is still there, except that there is a seasonal uh, variation in numbers. Sometimes the population will be very high. The only reason why people think that armyworm Ami went was that by the time the moths were flying and laid eggs, there were rains, so the eggs were washed and fed on by the predators. But this did not happen in the entire country. There are some areas that infestation by fall armyworm was very high. So let us not lie to ourselves that fall armyworm is gone. No, this insect is here to stay. Unless now we come up with strategies to suppress its population, the insect is here to stay.